Good day folks and welcome to the Mason Design Show. My name is Jason and today I would like to demonstrate the assembly and the operation of our winch operated Purple Mark House. Now the model we're using for our demonstration today is our custom Western Red Cedar Purple Martin House. This here has the Western Red Cedar shakes, siding, railings, posts, exterior grade plywood for the floor with this weather, res weather resistant stain. And you got your cedar shakes here, your cedar little peak cap. And this unit is also demonstrating our little doors here for keeping unwanted guests out when there's purple martins or not in the neighborhood. Being as this is our winch operated version, you will be getting your winch, the cable, the fittings, as well as the top piece with the pulleys made into it. And there's the base. The base is also western red cedar here. You can see the, the rough cut on the outside. You have to cut the wood properly to get that because once you cut it, it gets smooth, which makes western red cedar, especially the rough cut, more rare than average wood. Now for the demonstration purposes, I already have a winch made and a post made. This post here is made out of 2 by 8 it's been ripped down to three and a half inches by three and a half by inch and a half, which is a standard thickness. And then I have a half inch piece of plywood laminated in between with glue and screws. The benefit about this is it gives you a lot more flexibility as the length and the height you actually want to make your post at. Because it's a whole lot easier to find these and make them up than it is to make or find a perfect four by four. Because even at the minimum height, a 4x4 four four would have to be 16 feet high to work properly. Another benefit is, with the lamination of this, you can put holes through it if you need. And it really does not affect this, the structural strength of the entire piece because there are so many layers. Having said that, that is why I was able to put this bolt through assembly for the winch that I mounted. Now if you don't have this, you might want to put some screws in here. That's why I have not supplied bolts because people have different options and ideas of how they want to do it. Either way, it has to be solid. Now having said that, here's the cable. You see the cable has to wind around the outside, sorry, around the outside like this and then up underneath here. That's important. Now the first step, one of the first steps you have to do after is putting this together is this end will already be attached. You take this, bring it up and down all the way over to the other side here to make sure you've got enough cable. We've got 50 feet here so you can go at least 20, 20 feet of these with a post before you have an issue. Go all the way down, bring it, and then when you bring it to this side, you want to leave yourself about, you know, maybe an extra 8 inches so you get a few wraps here. Getting a few wraps on there takes the strain off the little anchor that's holding this cable on. It makes for a much more last, long lasting setup. Now that you've got it set up like that, just kind of hook it in there. This is where one of my favorite tools come in handy. Put that right about there. You'll see why in a second. When you put this on, there's about 3 sixteenths of an inch clearance all around in here. This here is an eighth of an inch. It's pretty snug as it is. If you have a, a post that's a little bigger, you're not going to have any luck and you're going to have to custom make an assembly for you. Now also notice this hook here. This hook has to go opposite the winch. Like I said, snug. There we are. Well, looking at the height of this, this is around six feet, over six feet. If you go on at the minimum of 12 feet for a post, you're looking at almost double this height. So if you have a post that's already existing, I recommend you you plan your day ahead. Make sure you do it safely because packing up a roof like that gets heavy 
and dangerous. And ask for help before you need it. Trust me on that one. Okay. So, we have this here. See the pulleys here? Pulleys have to go the same line as the winch. I actually have it a little bit high here. Hang on. There we go. Now, when you put your screws in, you don't want to take the first one and just bury it. Put it in, a little snug, and go the opposite. That way you make sure you're nice and lined up. Because if you just bury the one and it's off, something off a little angle, you'll be trying to fight it going back the other way. It puts a lot of strain on your wood underneath and by the time you actually do get your screws in, you're straining the fibers, which you don't want to, you don't want to cause weakness. There we go. This cable goes through over the top of the pulleys and hooks right into there, just like that. As you can see, it's now supported by the winch of the cable. You can test it if you want at this point. The testing might get a little annoying because Again, this is a little, it's not snug, but there's not a lot of weight on this, so it won't come down as easily as you think it should. Once you put the rest of the weight on it, that, that problem alleviates it itself. Now for the fun part. This roof, being out of plywood and cedar, is heavy. That's why you want to be careful. Get help. Here is our housing unit. You notice here we've got four housing units here. See the door is here. Come in, they've got all this room here. That gives the little birds a whole lot more protection from wind, rain, so they stay warmer, and any predators will have a very hard time trying to get even close to them. Generally, these have eight units per floor, but this one has four units per floor with the bigger units. Well, all right then, here's the base. This part goes on top of that, obviously. We have our locator tabs here. And because of these locator tabs, everything's built very tightly. I've got marks here. You want to line this A up with the A on the next piece, the A, so forth, in order to make sure it's in the same orientation as when I, when I built it, just for the best fit possible. It doesn't really matter where that mark is in, orient in relation to this, but they all have to be on the same part, same section. There's your base, the housing unit, the letter A, on, it fits snug, hence the necessity of lining up those cutters. Now be very careful with these cedar ones, because you can snap little shakes off the edge if you're not careful. Once it's up here, it'll be fine. Lined up again. Now we want to take this down a little bit. See how, much, see how well it's moving down, right? Once you start doing a bit of that, that can be the top there. There we go. Put the rest of it on. and a half inch, half inch galvanized nut. Set this on, set your washer on, nut, and what you're going to need is a deep socket 
Papa Dracha. You don't want to tighten it right up to begin with. Once we hand tight, it's pretty good just like that at this point. Reason being is you want to make sure everything lines up, otherwise you'll just see struggling later. That pushes forward, and this up. And it didn't quite work the first time, but that's okay. Out of it. You can see why you would want help. A lot easier to have somebody run the winch from the ground, especially if you're, you know, 10 feet up on a ladder for the fine tuning. Snug. It's good enough. With that peak in there, it has some watershed, so it'll keep water from getting in underneath. Having said that, it wouldn't hurt to put a little silicone around there anyway. One, make sure that stays in there as well as possible, and two, just to keep that little bit of moisture out. This particular hose is going out to Vancouver Island, and if anybody's been out there, they know how wet it can get, so they'll be definitely siliconing it. All right, so now. This here, as I mentioned before, is the landing. Let's see what that's used for. You now another trick I'm going to show you, using my favorite tool again. When you get to about a height like that, you can just clamp onto your post. That'll hold your roof up. Make sure you clamp it well, because that roof's heavy. Bring it down to the landing, the landing stops it, and it's just enough so you don't interfere with these with the crank operation. It has a gouge in here for the cable to go through. Bring this up, clean it out, get somebody else to help you if you need. Put that back together. going to spend his life on the side of a mountain overlooking the ocean at my dad's house. So, thanks dad for, for supporting us and buying this. I know you'll like it. Now, this whole assembly was done with the post existing. Now, some people sometimes have a post that can drop down by, uh, by a pivot. I have other arrangements for sitting for uh, mounting those. Like I said, you don't necessarily want to be struggling with this 12 feet off the ground. And if you have the best option possible, it would be is while you're building it, put this together, have it sitting right here on your landing, and then put your post in into your hole with your concrete in, put your braces on, whatever you want to do. I think that would be the easiest and safest way to do it. But then again, you know, if you already have a post existing, you're, you're, uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. So, thank you very much for watching the show and we'll see you next time.